This is the second part of our ongoing lecture on electron microscope. In the previous lecture on electron microscope, we have brushed our understanding of numerical aperture, resolution of a microscope and basic principle which are applied uh, for the functioning of electron microscope. In this lecture, we shall continue our discussion with basic components of electron microscope. As we have discussed previously, the components of electron microscope could be divided into five different uh, components. One is the vacuum system, the electron gun, electromagnetic lenses and the image formation system. Fourth is the photographic system and fifth is the cooling system. So, let us try to understand these components one by one. So, if I could compare the two different types of microscope that is a light microscope and an electron microscope with the help of a schematic diagram, we will understand that in case of a light microscope, a visible light source is placed before the condenser and the condenser, the light passes through the condenser and then falls on the tissue, it passes through the tissue and then goes through the objective and eyepiece lenses and then it is observed by the naked eye. But since in case of electron microscope, these are the two representatives of electron microscope here. So, since the electron microscopes, they use electron beams which cannot be generated easily and also since the wavelength is very low, so they could be very harmful uh, if uh, we could get exposed. So, they are placed in a very specialized uh, chamber. So, here an electron gun with the help of an electron gun, the beams are generated, the condensers are specialized and they are made up of metallic coils and then in case of transmission electron microscope, it passes through the tissue. The objective and the projector lenses, they are also very specialized and then they are observed through the naked eye on a fluorescent screen. So, our eye never gets exposed to the electron beam directly in case of electron microscope. Whereas, in case of scanning also, the electron beams are generated from electron gun and then uh, various different types of uh, condensers and lenses, the electron beams they pass and then it falls off on the tissue and deflected and these deflected beams, they are detected by a very sensitive instrument, uh, we can call them as a detector and then these detectors, they create a computer generated image and we observe this image on a screen. So, in case of electron microscope, we never get exposed to a uh, uh, electron beam directly. So, the first and the foremost component of an electron microscope is its vacuum system. A strong vacuum must be maintained in the entire column along the path of electron beam. Since electrons cannot travel very far in air, they will be uh, uh, colliding with the air molecules. So, there are two types of vacuum pumps which work together to create uh, vacuum inside an electron microscope. So, if uh, I have to show you a picture of an electron microscope and its vacuum system, so you will find that different levels of vacuum are required for different portions of the microscope. For example, the chamber and the camera, it requires a vacuum uh, to a two tune of 10 to the power minus 5 tor. Tor is the unit in which we measure the degree of uh, vacuum. Uh, the chamber in which specimens are placed, they uh, are maintained at 10 to the power minus 6 tor and uh, the chamber in which electron gun is placed, 
they are kept uh, at a vacuum level of 10 to the power minus 9 tor. So, this vacuum is maintained so that the electron beams they do not collide with any unwanted uh, air molecules in their path. The second component the second most crucial component of electron microscope happens to be the electron gun. The electron beam are emitted by an electron gun. This electron gun consists of two components. One is called as cathode, the other one is called as anode. The cathode is a filament which is made up of tungsten and it emits electrons and this cathode is maintained at a very high voltage of 50 to 100 kilo volts. On the other hand, the anode is maintained at a very minimal uh, voltage that is 0 kilo volt, so that there is a uh, gradient of voltage between cathode and anode. And because of this gradient of voltage or the difference in voltage, the electron beams they are released from the cathode end. This difference in voltage is also uh, uh, called as accelerating voltage and higher the difference of voltage between cathode and anode, higher will be the acceleration of electron particles. Here you can see with the help of a diagram that the electron gun it is made up of two uh, ends. One end is your anode which is kept at a very neutral voltage and the other end is your cathode. Now, this cathode is basically a chamber which is also uh, termed as uh, venet cylinder. Inside this venet cylinder, the tungsten filaments are kept and these tungsten filaments they act as cathode uh, side and this cathode is maintained at a very high voltage of in between the range of 50 to 100 kilo volts and when this high difference of voltage is, is maintained the electron beams are generated from these tungsten filaments and they uh, pass through they move towards anode and they pass through this uh, passage and they start falling downwards in the form of a beam. The third component happens to be electromagnetic lenses and image formation system. So, there are many lenses which are arranged together to control illumination. It also helps in controlling the focus of these uh, rays or beams and also helps in the magnification. So, there are two basic types of lenses which are found in electro, uh, electron microscope. One is called as condenser lens. The condenser lens they control the electron beam and they try to uh, uh, focus the, uh, the dispersing or diverting beams in one direction. The other set of lenses are called as objective lenses. Uh, objective lenses are also uh, accompanied by intermediate lenses and projector lenses. They are arranged in concert with each other to produce a final image on the viewing screen. So, here in the diagram you could see that in a transmission electron microscope a tungsten filament is there and then there is a anode. So, the electron beam starts moving downwards and these uh, dispersed electron beams they are focused and they are directed towards uh, the specimen with the help of condenser lenses these lenses are made up of metallic coils, generally copper coils. These copper coils, they generate electromagnetic field 
and because of these electromagnetic field the electron beams can be controlled and they could be given a certain direction. So the beam of electron then falls off on specimen it passes through and then this transmitted electron they pass through the objective lens then in some of the electron microscope there is a lens called as intermediate lens and then projector lens and these lenses they ultimately uh, allow the electron beam to fall on a detector and these detectors they generate uh, image on a screen or on a computer. Similarly in case of scanning electron microscope you will find condenser lens scanning coils, electromagnetic objective lenses. So, there are a bunch of different types of lenses which are arranged in tandem and these lenses they allow the electron beams to be focused to be uh, falling on the specimen and on a scanning electron microscope these specimens will deflect the beams and then uh, an image will be formed by the detector. Now the next component of an electron microscope is the photographic system. So in addition to viewing the image can be recorded photographically also uh, as an electron micrograph. So there is a separate component which is always attached so that the image which is being generated by the detectors or the sensors could be recorded and uh, for the uh, observation at a later period of time. So that entire system constitutes the photographic system. It is, uh, it is usually a digital system or a digital platform which records these images which are generated by the sensors. So uh, these uh, components they are maintained in a entire cylindrical system since this is a system where electron beams are being generated and very high amount of voltage is being used so high amount of electricity uh, heat is also being generated so a cooling system is also placed to maintain the temperature since the uh, since a high voltage is used for the emission of electrons a cooling system is attached to the column so that it does not get heated up beyond a limit so that is uh, about the different five components of an electron microscope so with the help of a diagram we can always compare various components of a light microscope here we have tried to compare various components of light microscope and transmission electron microscope and then scanning electron microscope and the image which is generated is uh, viewed at a different methods so the image which is generated by light microscope they can be viewed directly whereas the image viewed by the electron microscopy they are viewed on a fluorescent screen and in case of scanning electron microscope they are viewed on a monitor. So that was about different components of electron microscope. So now let us talk about the two uh, basic types of electron microscope one by one as we have already talked about there are two basic types of electron microscope one is called as transmission electron microscope. So the prototype electron microscope was basically uh, a transmission electron microscope and it was invented in 1931 by a German physicist E. Raska and an electrical engineer M. Noll way back in 1933. So the credit to develop a prototype electron microscope goes to Raska and Noll uh, way back in 1930s. In case of a transmission electron microscope as we have already talked about a beam of highly focused electrons is 
directed towards a thin section of specimen. This thin section of specimen uh, allows these beam to pass through it. The thin section could be lesser than 200 nanometer thick. So, when these thin sections of specimen, they allow the beam of electrons to pass through them. The image is created because of the deflection of these electron beams and these electron beams, these, ele these deflected electron beams, they are observed on a fluorescent screen. Here for the purpose of uh, demonstration, we are showing you the transmission electron micrograph of SARS-CoV-2 viruses. So, in case of uh, transmission electron microscope, highly energetic incident electrons interact with the atoms in the sample and produce characteristic radiation and particles which form the final image. The images obtained from transmitted electrons uh, backscattered and secondary electrons and emitted photons, they are uh, observed on a fluorescent screen. So, transmission electron microscope, they use a high voltage electron beam which is emitted by electron gun to create an image. The electron gun is made up of a tungsten filament which acts as cathode and also the cathode acts as the electron source. The electron beam is accelerated by an anode and then it is focused by electrostatic and electromagnetic lenses. These electrostatic and electromagnetic lenses, they are made up of metal coins, usually the copper metal coils. The electron beam is then transmitted through the specimen. As the electron beam emerges from the specimen, it carries information about the structure of the specimen that is magnified by the objective lens of the microscope. The transmitted electrons hit a fluorescent screen at the bottom of the microscope and give rise to a shadow image of the specimen with its different parts displayed in varying darkness according to their density. So, this entire process could be understood with the help of this diagram. Here on the left hand side, there is a picture of a transmission electron microscope and this transmission electron microscope can be uh, uh, demonstrated with the help of this schematic diagram. So, here we can see that there is a electron source also called as electron gun. This electron source houses two components, the tungsten filament which acts as cathode and then there is another component which is called as anode. Because of the voltage difference between these two components, electron beams are produced. These electron beams are initially scattered. They are focused and streamlined with the help of condenser lenses. So, a set of condenser lenses, they focus these beams and then these beams are directed towards the sample. These electron beams, they pass through the sample and while passing through these samples, the cellular components, they deflect these electron beams. These deflected electron beams, they are further magnified with the help of objective lens and a set of projector lenses. So, these magnified lenses help enhance or magnify the image which will which is created by these electron beams and then finally these electron beams they fall on 
an on a fluorescent screen and an image is created and observed. So, the image is viewed by projecting the magnified electron image onto a fluorescent viewing screen which is coated with a phosphor or scintillator material. The image can also be photographically recorded by exposing a photographic film directly to the electron beam or a fiber optic light guided uh, light guide to the sensor of a CCD camera. The image detected by the CCD uh, camera may be visualized on a monitor or computer. So, there are many advancements which have taken place in the method of capturing any image here. So, now this entire process requires that the specimen which we are using that should be very thin and this thin specimen should be prepared in a very special manner. So, the sample preparation for transmission electron microscope is also very crucial for the electron beams to pass through the specimen and also they are crucial so that these transmitted electron beams they could generate uh, a, a very good visual. So, there are different ways to prepare the material for transmission electron microscope. One way is to cut very thin sections of the specimen from a piece of tissue either by fixing it in the resin or working with it as frozen material. The another way could be uh, to prepare the specimen is to isolate it and study a solution after doing negative staining. For example, viruses or molecules of uh, molecules are uh, prepared in this manner under uh, for observation under transmission electron microscopes. So, there is a basic schematic diagram for the sample preparation pathways. So, for transmission electron micrography, the specimen could be prepared on a grid and then over a grid it they could be observed through a negative stain or with the help of metal shadow. In some of the uh, methods of preparation while observing under transmission electron microscope, they are embedded and then they are subjected to ultra microtomy. Ultra microtomy means they are cut into very very fine and thin sections and these thin sections are then stained with special stains sometimes also termed as immunolabeling and sometimes they are uh, stained with special uh, staining uh, material so that the uh, components of cell or subcellular sub components they could deflect the electron beams through it. So, let us talk about the sample preparation. The biological material contains large quantities of water and since the transmission electron microscope works in vacuum, the water must be removed. The tissue is preserved with different fixatives to avoid any disruption due to loss of water. These fixatives also aim to stabilize the specimen's mobile macromolecular structure by chemical cross-linking of proteins with uh, compounds like aldehydes uh, such as formaldehyde or glutaraldehyde and lipids are cross-linked with osmium tetroxide. These uh, tissue, they are then dehydrated in alcohol or acetone uh, and uh, after dehydration, uh, these tissue are then embedded so that it can be 
sectioned and for this purpose of embedding the tissue is passed through a transition solvent such as propylene oxide and then they are infiltrated with an epoxy resins such as eraldite uh, epon or uh, darcupan etc after the resin has been polymerized or after these resin they have been hardened the sample is uh, then sectioned very uh, finely using a diamond or a glass knife with an instrument called as ultra microtome so here uh, we can see that for after fixation we uh, do dehydration and then ultimately these uh, fixed specimen they are cut into fine sections and then they are observed under transmission electron microscope since the sections are very thin it becomes difficult to hold the sections and to pick up sections a boat is made around the glass knife which is then filled with water when sections are cut they float on the surface of water and then the sections are then picked up directly onto the surface of copper grid by touching the grid to the surface of water in a boat so this entire process can be understood with the help of this diagram where we could see that there is a diamond or glass knife and attached with this there is a uh, water filled area and these resin blocks on which the sample is embedded it passes on to the diamond knife and as they pass on to it a thin section keeps on uh, coming out and they simply float on the surface of water and from this surface of water a copper grid is used and they are collected on this copper grid grid directly from the water surface and these very fine thin sections they are then placed under the microscope so once the sections are placed on the copper grid the staining is done with heavy metals such as lead uranium or tungsten to scatter imaging electrons and to produce contrast between different structures because many uh, materials are nearly transparent to electrons the specimens can be stained uh, n block before embedding or later after sectioning also so typically thin sections are stained for several minutes with the urinal acetate followed by aqueous lead citrate which can then be studied under the microscope so this entire process can be understood with this with the help of this diagram here once the sections are put on a copper grid they are stained and these stained uh, sections are then used for uh, uh, microscope observation uh, so a brief understanding about a microtome so it is a tool which is used to cut extremely thin sections and ultra microtome is used for the preparation of ultra thin sections for observation under transmission electron microscope glass or diamond knives are used to cut very thin sections for the purpose of electron microscopy so here uh, there is a picture of microtome uh, and ultra microtome so this entire process ultimately prepares the sample for observation under the electron microscope and here is a close up of the resin block and the knife this is the portion which is called as knife and this is the resin block and this entire block keeps on moving up and down with a slight increase in their length and as it keeps on moving up and down the thin sections are cut and moved and they float on the water chamber which are kept here so that was all about the preparation of material for observation under uh, transmission electron microscope in our next lecture we will further proceed 
towards the second basic type of electron microscope that is scanning electron microscope and various variations and types of scanning electron microscope. Thank you so much for your patient listening.